Hello everyone, my name is Madison and welcome back to Help and Help and today I'll be teaching you three methods of how to feed your frog. Now the methods you're going to see in this video are specifically for frogs, not other amphibians and reptiles. You could use some of these for other reptiles and amphibians, but it's not going to include all of the ones that you could, so this is just for frogs. Now the first method I'm going to teach you guys about is tong feeding, and this is how I socialize my animals. So this is just when you use tongs. I particularly use these plastic Zoomed tongs. I know a lot of people like metal because these can break, but my animals bite down so hard on this. I feel like, you know when you stab yourself with a fork and it's like really painful? That's what I just picture metal tongs to be like. There's no scientific evidence backing that. It's just a personal thing that I like to use plastic because of how aggressively they bite these. <laughs> but in tong feeding, it's simple. It's just when you have your cricket or whatever you're feeding, you just pinch it and then you give it to them. <laughs> I say this is a really good way to socialize animals because it gives them some distance from you, but then they're gonna start to realize that you're a positive thing. When you're around, it means that they're gonna get food and then they can tend to come to you more easily and then you slowly, of course, handle them, etc. A different video topic. <laughs> I personally always tongue feed my fire belly toads because they are in an aquatic tank. Now my common method is the next one we're gonna be using, but because these fire belly toads are in water, I can't just dump crickets in there. So I use these tongs to make sure they are all fed and there are 10 fire belly toads in there. So by tongue feeding, I can count how many I'm giving to each frog, ensuring that they all get the same amount. My fire belly toads also happen to be my oldest frogs. Some of them are older than 10 years old and they have a hard time seeing. So tong feeding is really good for animals with special needs. I have a few blind frogs and one with a neurological issue that I tong feed because this lets me know that they are in fact eating. Now the next method is letting your frogs hunt. This is what I do for basically everybody else besides the few I mentioned in the tong feeding section. So I have this big bin of crickets. It kind of looks like what you'd see at a pet store. It just makes life easier when you have this many animals. So I shake the tubes into a cup and then I put the specific vitamins and calcium etc depending on the animal shake it up and then I just pour it on into the tank I predominantly use this method because a lot of my toads could use some exercise and I like giving them a natural tank and then allowing them to do natural toad things there are a few downsides to this method though one you cannot always catch if a frog is not getting as much as the other frog in the enclosure so if you're noticing that one frog is growing way more than the other one, you're gonna wanna switch over to tong feeding or the next method I'm going to share. Also, crickets can hide behind parts of their enclosure, behind water bowls, underwater bowls, inside of hides, like high up where the toads and frogs can't reach them, etc. That's why it's extremely important to always do regular checks on your frogs and toads and to always check their enclosure, even if you have a bioactive enclosure. You never know when something's gonna change up. And some of you might be wondering, why do you use this method if there's so many downsides to it? Well, I do regular checks of my frogs and toads, and I regularly check and clean their enclosures. This is what they do in the wild. A lot of these frogs and toads still have their wild instincts, so I like to give them this outlet for them to still do what wild toads and frogs would do. It's also a really great way to give them exercise and to stimulate how their brains would normally work. Only irresponsible owners shouldn't do this realistically, and of course you shouldn't have a frog or toad if you're irresponsible, but if you think about it, if you're not cleaning the tank, or checking the tank, that's when you're gonna get the issues of the crickets building up and you're, there's gonna be so many other issues as well. So this is a perfectly fine method as long as you're properly taking care of your frogs and toads. And the third method is box feeding. Now I just take a plastic terrarium and you just set the frog on inside and you put the crickets in with them. It's fairly similar to how people do the blackout boxes for snakes, how you just set them in there so that they associate feeding with this box and they don't strike at you in the enclosure. Of course, frogs and toads can't realistically do that kind of damage to you, except for maybe pixie frogs and other breeds that have prominent teeth. But the box feeding is a really good way if you are letting them hunt normally, like the second method, and all of a sudden one frog is getting way bigger than the other one, you're gonna wanna take that frog out, set them in a box, and let them eat. Just go at it. 15 minutes of letting them eat as many crickets as they absolutely want. Obviously, there's an ongoing issue. If you're letting them hunt and one's getting more than the other, you might wanna look at some other facts. If one is being more dominant, it could cause some issues. Even non-violent, 
frogs and toads can have issues like this. You think of a white street frog, friendliest frogs on the planet, right? Well, they can still have their issues with one taking over and harming some of the smaller frogs in their tank. Box feeding is also a really good method for disabled animals. I prefer the tong feeding just because that's what I've always done and that's what my fire belly toads are used to since I don't really want to switch something up after 10 years, you know? But if you currently have a disabled, sick, or injured frog, the box feeding method is a really great way alongside tong feeding. Box feeding is also a great alternative to tong feeding. If your frog is still just not comfortable eating around you, you might want to try the box feeding. Simply because the box feeding is just what they would naturally do, but you have them in an area where you can tell if they're eating crickets or not. So if you adopt a new frog and they're having a hard time adjusting and they're just not eating and you're starting to get concerned, I would 100% suggest the box method. And then what I do is obviously you'd have a lid on it, but you take a towel and you cover three fourths of the tank and then you just leave them be for 15, 20 minutes with the crickets in there. So this is gonna give them just a area where they're gonna feel secure and you're gonna have your best chance of them eating. Don't sit and watch because if they're already freaked out and they see this giant face looking at them, they're not gonna wanna eat any more than they already didn't want to. So this is a really great way for scared frogs or new frogs to eat. A lot of people just continue to use the box feeding method forever because they like that they want their frogs to naturally hunt, but they don't want to have that possibility of the crickets being in the tank that can um, agitate them, etc. with the second method. So all together, deciding what works best depends on you and your frogs. I personally only use the box method when I have a sick or injured frog, but besides that I use tongue feeding and letting them hunt on their own. This is just because it's what works best for my animals. So I hope this helped you out. If you enjoyed You Know What To Do, leave a like and subscribe for more, and I hope you guys have a happy day. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.